Painting Triangles is one of my new shawls in the Painting Shawls book. This book has 13 patterns in it, and Painting Triangles is one of the easier designs because it starts so tiny at the triangle tip, and all you do is work slip stitches using one color at a time. So I'm gonna show you how to cast on the Painting Triangles shawl in this video, and we'll work the I-cord edges, some stripes, and triangular slip stitches, and just paint and play with colors, and knit it as big as you want. So I designed this shawl in two sizes, a small size that I'm wearing, and this large size right here. And you can just decide how big you wanna make it as you knit. So the small size, you just simply work the border earlier. But both sizes require two skeins of a solid yarn for the main color. So you could use Westwool Bicycle or your favorite hand-dyed yarn, but two skeins that contrast well with all the contrast colors. Two skeins for the main color, and you could dive into your stash and use all of these leftovers or single skeins and mix it up for a multicolored version, like this beautiful sample here. Or you could keep things simple. For the small size, I just used three contrast colors. So bare minimum, you're gonna wanna get two skeins of the main color, same color, and three different contrast colors. Or more is more, less is a bore. So grab some yarn, fingering weight, and grab some needles, and let's cast on and knit those triangles. The Painting Triangles shawl begins at the small corner right here with 11 stitches using the main color. So you need two skeins of the main color, this Westwool bicycle, and you could use leftovers, fingering weight leftovers for all those triangle pops, or some single skeins, some full skeins. But this warm palette would be really nice with the gray. So that gray main color, or whatever your main color is, it's gonna frame the triangles and be consistent throughout the entire fabric, and the contrast colors change. So start with the main color using any cast on method that you like. Cast on 11 stitches. I'm going to use a long tail cast on. Once you have 11 stitches on your needle, turn around to knit eight. So knit those first eight stitches with your main color. Five, six, seven, eight, and slip three with yarn in front. So bring that yarn forward to slip three purlwise. And we're going to slip those three at the end of every row. So get used to that little I-cord detail. We're gonna do it a lot. Ready for row one, right side. Keep that main color attached because we're gonna carry the yarns along the edge as you work those stripes with two rows main color, two rows contrast. Two main color, two contrast. So row one, I'm gonna use this beautiful orange as my contrast color. Contrast color one, knit three, Knit those three stitches, and then make one. Use the backwards loop cast on to make one, just like that. So let me show that one more time. If you hold the yarn in your right hand, when you make one, just twist the yarn and pop it onto the needle. And you wanna see that little crisscross, that little crisscross right there as you do the make one. So one more time, I do it like this when I hold the yarn in my left hand. Make one. Knit five. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. And slip those last three stitches with yarn in front. Now row two, wrong side. We're going to knit eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Purl one, and slip three with yarn in front. So keep that yarn in front as you slip three purlwise. Leave the yarns attached. We're gonna carry the colors along the edge as you, as you stripe colors. Row three, right side, using main color. Knit three, 
slip one with yarn in back. So slip one purlwise with the yarn in back, knit five, and slip three with yarn in front. So we're getting that first little slip stitch right there. It's going to be the tip of our contrast color triangle. Row four, wrong side, knit eight, five, six, seven, eight, slip that same stitch. We're going to slip four with yarn in front. So we're slipping that same stitch and our last three stitches. So let's start with one more contrast color row for row five using that same contrast color one. One, two, three, knit three, make one, using that backwards loop cast on, knit six. One, as I'm knitting, I have this little tail from my triangle. I'm going to start weaving in this end as I go, as I knit six. I'm going to knit a stitch and cross that little tail. So I'm, I don't have to weave in that end later. I can do it right now. So throughout the shawl, when you introduce a new color, you can do this right away with your contrast color. Or if you catch it on the next contrast color row, that's okay too. But I'm knitting six. And do that, you know, six times is enough. But once you get longer through the rows and you do that weave in Steven, I call it, you can do it for like eight or ten stitches, doing that knit cross, knit cross, knit cross as your rows get longer. But for now, I have my end woven in, and I just knit six stitches, so I can slip three with yarn in front. That end is all woven in, ready to go. Row six, wrong side, knit eight, four, five, six, seven, eight, purl two, one, two, and slip three with yarn in front. Keep on following these rows, these first rows with that first contrast color, and you're going to start slipping more stitches as you increase with that make one increase. You'll be slipping more stitches, so keep on repeating, and uh, coming right up I'll show you uh, how to slip this many stitches. When you increase, you get so many stitches to slip. I'm going to show you how to slip those as you work with the main color. As your triangles get bigger, it's going to feel a little bit weird in the beginning because you're slipping so many stitches right at the beginning of your row and slipping a lot at the end of the wrong side row. But this is what the floats should look like. You have these long floats on the wrong side and it looks kind of cool. You get these ladders in the shapes of triangles on the wrong side as well. So I'm going to show you row 27 with the main color. So whenever you're working a main color row and slipping so many stitches, that yarn is hanging out all the way over here and you've got to knit those first few stitches. So when you do that, when I knit these first few stitches, don't knit super duper tight. Do you see how I just knit tight and there's like barely any space from where the yarn was to where I'm knitting? So before you knit that first stitch, instead of having the stitches all bunched up like this, just keep them relaxed on the needle. So you see, okay, hi, hello triangle, you want to see that triangle. And as you knit those first few stitches, just don't think about it too much. Just keep it relaxed. Knit those three stitches, you're going to get that float on the wrong side. And if it feels like the float is too loose, then maybe next time you could knit those stitches a little tighter. And if it feels too tight, then just loosen up a little. But knit three for row 27, and I'm going to slip seven with yarn in back. So when you're slipping this many stitches, slip them all purlwise, slip those seven triangle stitches, and then when you knit five, knit five, just like that. But when I knit those next five stitches, my slip stitches are kind of spread out on the needle like that. So again, don't have those stitches be all bunched up, and don't knit that next stitch really tight. Do you see that, how it's all bunched up right there? Then you're going to get that really small ladder and you might, it might start to pucker a little bit. So keep it kind of relaxed, not too loose, not too tight. So I just slipped seven. Keep them spread out on the needle like that. So as you knit the next five stitches, 
you get that ladder on the wrong side, that float, just, you know, evenly across, even the length is nice and even with the length of those slip stitches. But when you start, just don't think about it too much and see what happens. If it feels a little tight, then loosen up with your slip stitches. But the key is when you're slipping or knitting, don't have the stitches be all bunched up like that. Just keep them spread out nice and relaxed on the needle as you knit and slip. So those are all the techniques for the triangle section, and the triangles are just going to get bigger and bigger. And you can decide to knit the triangles as large as you want. So here was the end of that first triangle, and then you work a garter ridge with the main color all the way across, and then you introduce a new little triangle point with those increases at the edge. So enjoy all your color pops, customize your colors as you go. You might get excited and throw in more colors, and what I love about this triangle shape is you only increase with the contrast color rows, so it's a nice skinny triangle. So it's not that deep, wide triangle size. It's a really long, narrow triangle. And then the border is your chance to customize your colors as well. So here's a few options of the border. This sample has the main color with garter ridges, and you can just work garter stitch when you're ready for the border. And you can do the border at any time. So you could stop early for a small size, keep on going for a large. You could add some extra color stripes like this for your border. Or you could do a solid border. This was a little skinny. This was a little skinny solid border in the small size. And this was a striped border. So you can customize the length of your border however you want. Solid, stripes, or color pops. And if you want to just do a small border, that's fine. This is enough for the shawl not to cur curl or roll. Or you could do this, or even a bigger border, or throw in another stitch pattern for your border, or some bobbles, and it's your chance to really finish your shawl, so go simple or have fun with your color pops and enjoy that beautiful painting triangles. Well, I hope you enjoyed those tips and tricks. And remember, with these painting patterns, it's all about customizing your palette using your stash and inviting some clashy color combinations and you can make it more moody or really bright and contrasty or a total neon fantasy. So use your stash or go into the yarn shop and try to find a palette that you haven't quite used before and uh, paint with yarn. So I can't wait to see all your progress with hashtag painting triangles shawl on Instagram or share those projects on Ravelry. And if you like that painting triangle shawl, you can try any of the other slip stitch designs in the painting shawls book. And this is at stephenandpenelope.com. And I can't wait to see all those projects that you knit. And I'll see you in the next video.